everyone, and welcome back to Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain. We're at episode 3, where last time we rescued Kazuhira Mila, um, which uh, from Guande, I believe, was the uh, was the name of the of the village. We teamed up with Ocelot on the codec for the first time, and just had a really fun time. Just had a really fun time, just uh, learning the game. And it feels like there's a lot more to experience and get into, and that's what we're going to do this episode as we move into the the next the next chapter in this story. So we've done the awakening in the first episode, we've done Phantom Limbs last episode, and now we're moving in to the next episode when we press continue. Got to say that it, I'm just like this this big boss chilling out over here, not even smoking a cigar in the chopper like Ground Zeroes. He's just. He's just sad. He's just a depressed big boss. Missing a limb. No cigars, except the time travel cigars that make time go faster. He can't use that right now because he's reflecting on the past nine years that he's missed out on. Poor big boss. <laughs> I feel like we're getting a very, like, introspective, um, reserved side of him that we've never seen before because he's generally in the past always had a lot to say and been very engaging um, in dialogue um, and we got a bit more of that in the tapes we listened to last episode but yeah he's just you can tell that he looks very deep in thought he's not just puffing down a cigar and ready to ready to you know get on with get on with it he's, uh, he's a bit sad um, so I'm keen to know more about what's going on in that brain of his and what's actually going on with this game. Um, we've finally got a Kaz and Big Boss uh, reunion to look forward to, where Kaz also, Phantom Limbs, dude, dude's lost an arm and a leg. Uh, so he also did not get out of that uh, explosion uh, unharmed. Because at the end of Ground Zeroes, it shows them side by side in the hospital bed and Miller's like, don't you dare die on me. So they were together in the hospital situation, but then um, it looks like uh, it affected um, the boss way more to have that coma, but then Miller's been out and about, and then we've finally rescued him, where we unfortunately couldn't even say the magic words to him of, uh, kept you waiting, huh? <laughs> when we carried him out, away from the, um, whatever the hell those things were, um, that appear in the, in the mist. But uh, with that, let's continue uh, with the Phantom Pain, and uh, see where we end up. We last extracted via Chopper to pull Miller out. Boss, whatever that mist is, it's all around you. Okay. We can't see through it. I'm changing the RV so it's outside the mist. Get over there. The Chopper will be waiting. So because, because I didn't, I uh, quit out of the game, um, to record another game, <laughs> uh, obviously it didn't, it's not just saving and taking me into, um, the next chapter straight away. It actually wants me to replay right at the end of the checkpoint. Let's just, let's skip to the extraction. <laughs> All right. We're ready, we're ready to leave. <laughs> Miller extracted for the, for the second time now. I was wondering if it would just like chuck us straight into like the next scenario, whether it would checkpoint us. So there you go. It checkpointed us. Wow. Um, so of course, obviously, because it's running off the same checkpoint, we we'll have the same rating as last time. Um, episode one: Phantom Limbs. There we go. Exit results. Let's go. Starring. It's interesting that it does like a little mini credits thing at the end of every like episode or mission. Ground Zeroes did the same thing. Every mission is its own contained story. Afghanistan today and Ocelot's briefing number two. We're headed for the Seychelles. That's where our new home is now. Hey. Some operation we had, huh? Nine years ago. Carving out our own world. Making our own future. 
and they took it away. They played us like a damn fiddle! Is apparently the iconic quote from Ground Zeroes there. <laughs> Yeah, we were dogs, all right. Slinking around, out of sight for sight. Digging up whatever kind of dirty money we could find. You name it. We did it. You see this? Diamond dogs. Our new home. Yeah, he did rebrand. The phantom of our former selves. Triumph. Death. Flashback to Ground Zero's time. Fade to white, blinding white. I remember, nine years ago. Mother Base. Yeah, there it is. It took a while to load in that flashback. <laughs> this scene was fucking awesome, though. Like, seeing the boss coming off the helicopter like... I wish we could have played this. Like, I wish it would have been like a gameplay sequence when we jump off the helicopter and we like have a bit of a shooting segment and then we have to carry Miller out on our back. <laughs> there it is. Help me sneak. Dude, it's fucking Skull Man, dude. Skull Face. What the fuck is that dude's problem? Who the fuck is Skull Face? Apparently he's got a like a history or a personal grudge against Snake based on like the tapes that we listen to. To your boss when you get home. From Ground Zeroes. But he's also after Cypher. He wants to kill Cypher, and that's how he got the information out of Puss. I think is like you would kill Cypher for me, not for you. So he wants he wants Zero out of the equation. As well. Snake. still here just to suffer every night I can feel my leg and my arm even my fingers the body I've lost the comrades I've lost won't stop hurting it's like they're all still there <laughs> who got caught up with Cypher. A group above nations. Even the US. And I was the parasite below, feeding off Zero's power. They came after you in Cyprus. In Afghanistan. Cypher just keeps growing. Swallowing everything in its path. Getting bigger and bigger. Who knows how big now? Boss. I'm gonna make him give back our past. Take back everything that we've lost. And I won't rest. Until we do. Fuck yeah. Wow. And Big Boss just says... Our new mother base. I don't know how long it'll take. Wow. But I'll make it bigger. Better than before. Gosh. What should I do? Boss? Tell me. Tell me like you used to. Okay, that's a start. He said something. Episode 2, Diamond Dogs. 
And now I recognize where that quote is from, because I knew it was from Metal Gear Solid at some point, and there it is. That's the meme. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. And there it is. And now I have the context of that. <laughs> kind of heartbreaking to see where that is from because holy fuck man things have changed boss we're pulling money recruits just to combat cypher rubbing our noses in bloody battlefield dirt all for revenge the world calls for wet work and we answer <gasps> no greater good no just cause. Yo. Cause. Cypher sent us to hell. But we're going even deeper. I know. I'm already a demon. Heaven's not my kind of place anyway. Wow. It's interesting to see the um, snake having his hair in a ponytail too. It suits him. Dogs of war for nine whole years. That ends today. Now you're not sleeping, and we're not junkyard hounds. We're diamond dogs. Diamond. Yeah, <laughs> that with that quote felt so obvious. Just there's like we're not hounds. We're diamond dogs. Let them talk. That's actually so cool. I can crush Cypher, boss. And you can build the army that can do it. Just one thing, cause. This isn't about the past. We're fighting for the future. And Spurs baby that I didn't recognize when he first showed up. He looks good. He he looks he looks really good. Like Oh alright. Learn how to run mother base. That's where we are. Okay. Ocelot looks like um a very good young Ocelot from like the future games. There's something I want to talk about. Concerns the running of mother base. Come meet with me. All right, I'll meet with you. Just give me a sec. Let's have a chat. Um, like o young Ocelot in Metal Gear Solid Three. Um, obviously, he's in like a different getup. He's got a whole thing going on. Um, he's he's very he has like uh, differences, but also some things that are the same to how he is in the future. This version of Ocelot, um, because it's tw it, we're we're actually now at a halfway point. So twenty years after Metal Gear Solid Three and twenty one years before Metal Gear Solid 1. Um, so we're at like a halfway point. So Ocelot coming into what he would then come to look like in Metal Gear Solid 1 is, is very good. This is like the bridging Ocelot from the past to the to the future. It's very interesting to have that context of like this is the halfway point between um, the first game chronologically and the first game in Metal Gear Solid um, series in release order. Um, but yeah, he, he looks like the, like the hair and like, he's got the, like the, the facial hair starting and like the outfit looks very much like, uh, you can see that growing into, uh, Metal Gear Solid 1, um, Ocelot, which is, which is amazing. Um, it's funny to see how Big Boss loses his arm, loses his limb, and so does Revolver Ocelot later on at the hands of Grey Fox in Metal Gear Solid 1. Uh, he also loses it, and then ends up with fucking weird, weird brand new limb with weird plot threads that are, you know, Metal Gear Solid Two kind of runs with. Uh, but it's very, very interesting because Ocelot really admires the boss, like so. It's just like it's poetic. It's like you share the same fate, <laughs> and then you'll grow to have this huge rivalry with the boss's son solid because you've hypnotized yourself into thinking you are liquid but also you're completely aware of who you are it's it's very funny um it's a bit like ocelot is such an intriguing character 
Like, there's just so much going on with him all the time, which is why I feel like he was sorely missed in Boss, Peace Walker. No, hold on. Boss. Oh, sorry. Boss. I can see you see my own my own guys. Boss. Nice. Boss, come meet with me. You came. This base belongs to you now. Make it. Go for them, not me. That's enough. Sorry, continue. This base belongs <laughs> to you now. Make Diamond Dogs the force it deserves to be. Like any organization, we need good people. And we need to make good use of their talents. Miller asked me to lay that out for you. Oh. Start bringing people in. That's the Fulton recovery. It's a Fulton recovery device. Yes. <laughs> yes. When you're in the field, use it to extract any soldiers or prisoners you want back here. And we'll see if we can persuade them to join the ranks of Diamond Dogs. Go on. Test it out on the staff here. Anyone you want. First, put them to sleep. You have a tranquilizer gun, don't you? I'm ready, boss. Please tell me that this is possible. Please tell me that no, I'm not the only one who's thought that this is what we can do. Please. Can we please Fulton Recovery Ocelot? What the fuck? First, put him to sleep. What the fuck? You can't put him to sleep, but he recites Japanese at you, and is immune to tranquilizing. Two plus two equals five. Two plus two equals five. What? Two plus two equals five. First, put him to sleep. You have a tranquil. Are we out of unique dialogue there? You got one more for me? <laughs> Have you heard of the la le lo le lo 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 le lo 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 le lo lo Dude! Mmm! Fucking... Fucking... Weird shit, man. Have you got anything else? Okay, we might have exhausted it. He's immune to getting tranquilized, but he gives you interesting information. I also love the real passage of time, by the way. That's a fucking... that's great. Alright, go to sleep. Out like a light. Now approach him and extract him. Very interesting. We cannot extract you or put you to sleep. I would have loved if it gave us that option. <laughs> Oh, it's different. Hold on. Whoa. Extraction, Extraction arrived at Mother You can only bolt and recover someone if they're not resisting. No dead bodies either. They don't make great recruits. The staff member you just extracted will be assigned to the team best suited to his abilities. See for yourself. Open your eye droid. Select staff uh... management from the Mother Base menu. So that staff member was placed on the R&D team. The R&D team is in charge of developing all kinds of weapons and items that will support you on missions. Take a look at the development list. Select weapons items under the development heading. Please specify That's the R&D team's development list. See the item called Cardboard Box? Didn't seem much use to me, but Miller was adamant that you'd want it on the list. <laughs> word in infiltration technology. So he said. Yes. In any case, we don't have the manpower to develop it just yet. We need more staff on the team. Go extract a few more people. Boss, put the iDroid away for a moment. You can also Fulton extract individuals you've knocked out. Why don't you try knocking someone out with CQC next? Show them how it's done, boss. Okay. Um, I will also say, because I have played some more Ground Zeroes, we can't go in there now, but I've got, um, I've got a few more people, um, that look to be in the support unit. I don't know if they are from Ground Zeroes or not. They look like they could be. 
Um, we'll just have to check and we can go back into staff management because people have said that, yeah, if you extract people in ground zeros, you can have them in phantom pain. Um, all right, CPC. It's the best way to knock someone out instantly. Nice. Excellent, box. Now extract it. Get out of here. I'll make you fly away, all the way up there, to come back down here. Can I seek you, see you? Extraction arrived no. at mother base. I'm sorry, continue. One thing I should mention. A Fulton extraction won't always be successful. If the person is injured, the shock of it could kill them. And if the weather is unfavorable, well... Ah. Could end up going missing. You can determine the chance of success by approaching the person you want to extract. If you want to be sure you can get them out, best carry them to the chopper instead. All right, extract the next staff member. Oh, that's cool. So there is a chance with fault and recovery that it can go bad. Um, that's incredible. Um, detailing, like depending on like the weather and stuff. That's awesome. It's an honor. It's a shame we can't CQC Ocelot. Um, multiple adversaries nearby, perform CQC on them in quick succession. This allows you to take them all out before any of them can strike back. This is literally a console version of Peace Walker. Like, you've got Mother Base, you've got the same, like, sc scoring thing of uh, the people that you get in. You assign them so you can do GMP, so you can make stuff, and you're building Mother Base again. Um, it's essentially just, like... They just remade Peace Walker's basic concepts of like the gameplay loop, and then put it in here, which is which is very interesting. It's like, man, makes me wish that Metal Gear Solid Five was just Peace Walker, and then we and then in a world where Kojima was still at Konami, or Metal Gear Solid was allowed to exist and was good, then Metal Gear Solid Six could have been, I don't know, something, which would have been cool. Uh, anyway. Uh, multiple CQC in quick succession. Uh, I actually think I just did this wrong. Hold on. I'm supposed to uh, throw you first. Oh, maybe not. Hold on. Can you repeat the question? Because I got distracted. That's enough. Don't pull any punches. I don't think that was right. Like, I took them both out with CQC, but I think it's supposed to do a thing. I'm genuinely surprised Ocelot's not repeating himself. Maybe not. Because in Peace Walker... In Peace Walker, it had the thing where you would press it to do CQC, and then it would pop up. It would pop up with, like, a little flashing thing, and you would press it to do, like, another move. So I was wondering if it was going to do that. But select no. weapons items under the development Please heading. Now select project. cardboard box and start development. Just be aware that development requires funds. GMP. Watch we don't end up in the red. Dude. The development requirements. They won't stop. Fuck yeah. Dude, I have a cardboard box. Finished. This makes me so happy. This is perfect for Big Boss. Yes, give it to me. Please select a you can have the support point. units supply you with weapons and items you've developed. Think of it as your own personal delivery service. You got a shower. Supplies requested. Supply drop complete. Oh. There it is. It's coming in. Oh, also, I would like to point out, by the way, oh, I would like to point out, I asked a question in the last episode of, oh, can I aim on my back? And I was doing a bunch of this, bunch of this. It's literally as simple as just, yeah, do that. And also, I think when you get knocked back, you're also in this position as well. Um, so I realized that when I was practicing ground zeros, because in ground zeros, you can do the same thing. Like, you can do this, and then you can do a bit of that. And a bit of this, and a bit of that, and a bit of that. And then you can walk around. And I think that's really cool. Anyway. And there it is. Not sure what it's good for, but Miller said you know what to do. Ah! Uh, uh, 
staff members you no! were all placed on the R and D team, but that was Miller's decision. If you think they belong somewhere else, you're free to move them around. Well, that about does it. You won't make any GMP or find recruits hanging around here. Board the chopper when you're ready for a mission. Open your eye droid and select a landing zone to tell it where to pick you up. Or if you're still in the mood for knocking guys on their asses, you can stay around here a while and give the men some practice. Just come pay me a visit. I am in the mood for knocking people on their asses. Bot. Go! Oh. This isn't the time. <laughs> Yo! I love messing with us a lot. Let's practice your CQC. Begin by grabbing it. No. Don't pull any punches. <laughs> I won't pull any punches. Hello, team. This is when you know it's the boss, baby. We run around in a cardboard box, and we have a, we have fun. CQC out of the box. Hey, yeah. Interrogate him, knock him out, kill him. Scratch that last one for now. Go ahead, knock him out. <laughs> Good. Extract the staff member. Everyone just watching. So funny. Goodbye. I'm so glad that Fulton Recovery is still in this game. Extraction arrived at Mother Base. Strike an adversary repeatedly to knock him out. He'll stay in contact. <laughs> Go on and extract him. Get, get knocked out, son. Repeatedly to knock him out. He'll stay unconscious for longer than if he throws. Extraction arrived The rest will fall into place with some time in the field. Go ahead and call the chopper from your eye drawer. Um, can I? Yes. All right. So if we look in here. Night Crocodile, Roaring Hedgehog, Brass Armadillo. Um, these guys, right? So White Mastodon, Sly Harrier, and Jade Tree Frog. Um, Select unit. I don't know if these guys are from Ground Zeroes or not. Um, direct contract. Oh, there's no, there's no description or anything, so I don't actually know. But they're in my supply, my support unit. Uh, R and D team. Cool. Everybody is ass. Because I literally have no Imagine if you could uh imagine if you could import your Peace Walker team. God damn. I wouldn't even be able to because I played Peace Walker on Xbox 360. <laughs> but that would be that would be great. Uh development. 99 things. Um I can't check out any other um, column, but it has told me that I've got a bunch of stuff ready for development. So there you go. Um, popped up with some interesting things at the end there, which I think may have been... Oh, hang on. Oh no, that's fine. Um, which I think may have been related to the fact that I've got, like, the complete edition of the game. Uh, so I think it gives you some bonus stuff. Can I want... Let's walk around a bit more, because I don't know if the chopper will be, you know, like the end of whatever this is. Let's have a look around. Let's walk around Mother Base. Look at this. Come to Mother Base. We got fucking floaty boats. And we got fucking... We got fucking mat, uh, rats. We got fucking mice problem. And I can't shoot it. But we got fucking mouse. And we got this dude. And we got... Uh, Diamond Dogs brand um, life-saving equipment and cool, cool logos. Who did who did uh, cars pay to be the graphic designer to design the um, Diamond Dogs logo? You think he like approached some graphic designer locally and he was like, "Hey man, I know this might sound weird, but I've got a job for you." And then we dive into the ocean. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know that if we hang off and fall, we will just die. Beautiful. He managed to get another, like, oil rig type deal. He managed to just get another one. He was like, fuck it. Uh, let's do Mother Base out at sea again, because it, it went so well last time. Ooh. Hey. It looks like the, uh, it looks like the, um... Big Shell. 
from Metal Gear Solid 2. Like, it's got a lot of, uh, there's a lot of it that, like, resembles that sort of... Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of this that... Can I climb? No. I was like, can I hang from these? Um, yeah, a lot of it resembles the, the big shell, which might be intentional. Is there a reason for me to be up here? No. But we're taking a look around anyway before we call in the chopper. Let's go up here. This is what I wanted Peace Walker to be. This would have been so fucking cool. If Peace Walker was like a fully realized... Uh, we can't go up. We can't go up anymore. If, um, yeah, Peace Walker was like a fully realized console experience, this is what it would have been like, I guess. Look. There's a white one. Can't use the codec. And I'm back here. Alright. Um, and we can't really go... Actually, can I... Can I... I'm obviously not going to be able to check out everywhere. Let's see what cars has been building for me all this time. Alright, we can go up here. Nice. He's definitely made sure to put the logos up everywhere. Because they, they, we need to know what the fuck's going on. Alright, a lot of stuff is still under construction. So I'm assuming that it'll like open up more over time. No, I meant to drop down. Drop me down. Oh, there is full damage. Okay. We live and we learn. Alright, let's call in the chopper. I've had my fun. Please select a landing zone. Landing zone. This is Pequod. Arriving shortly. Pequod, my man. I love that they thank you after, like, wrecking him. Alright, am I getting in the helicopter? Let's go. Oh, hang on. You want my attention? No? Okay. I'm getting in. Alright, we're going on a ride in the chopper. There it is, there's the base. Extraction arrived at Mother Base. Nice. Development project has been added. You could give me an S rank for that if you wanted. Oh, that's fine. Oops. Oops. Alright, because we spent money. To do stuff. So that's episode two, Diamond Dogs. Wonderful. <laughs> did we did we need credits for that one? That's okay, guys. You you don't have to give me credits every time. We we can uh, we can. Can I turn the the option for credits off? <laughs> In the settings, I did not play. I did not feel like I just played a movie. Uh, I need to listen to Ocelot's briefing number two in the state of Afghanistan. I don't know if it was going to let us in that sequence, so let's remember to listen to that, as well as briefing number three um, in whatever happens next. Episode three. 
Mother base. Mission list updated. Boss, I know you haven't been back long, but I've prepared a list of missions for you. Open your eye droid. Oh, we can do it while we're in the thing. Wow. Just me just riding with Pequod, dude. Alright. I love that we didn't even clean this dude up. Like, he gets home, still covered in blood, and they're like, fucking... Go and do shit. The fucking photos are so funny. Because they're, they're from moments that we literally just experienced. Except that one down the bottom. Does that mean that we're going to have stuff build up over time? Ah, cool. I can press triangle for the tapes. The moniker, Shalashaska, is his second briefing. Uh, Salt 2, meeting Ocelot, and the formation of a certain organization. Where is Zero? And Afghanistan today. Um, hell yeah. Let's get into the tape. Also, we just have, like, good, good music tapes as well. All right, Ocelot's briefing number two. I hear they started calling you Shalashaska in Afghanistan. What's that about? <laughs> you know the term Sharashka? It's slang for a suspicious, hastily thrown together organization. The word became associated with a type of forced labor facility in the Soviet Gulag system. OKB scientists and engineers who'd been convicted of crimes were sent to a Sharashka for forced R&D. The Sharashkas were supervised by Lavrenti Berea of the NKVD, the secret police, under the official name, 4th Special Department. Forest research? That's not very different from what we do here. <laughs> Diamond Dogs is different. Everyone here believes in you. Regardless of where they came from or why they're here, they revere you. And they're fighting because it was their choice. And if it wasn't, they'd leave? Who knows? That's our reality here. Whether it's real or not. If there's another truth, I don't want to know it. All that matters is, that's the concept that's taken shape in their heads. The traces of a group ideology, our superstructure, to put it in Marxist terms. All right. Go on. Right. So anyway, at some point the enemy started calling me Sharashka. This was after the war in Afghanistan broke out. While I was keeping an eye on you in that hospital, I was also heading up interrogations here. The men I broke gave up their comrades and families everything they wanted to protect the most. No real cause for it. I just let myself get caught up in the old Russian pride. And suddenly I received the honor of becoming special interrogation advisor to the forced labor camps. But the more men I interrogated, the more people saw me as just that. The interrogator. It helped cover my real objective of keeping you safe. You went that far for me. Far enough to keep you alive. I ended up being pretty well known among the Afghan guerrillas. Some of them would have seen me on the battlefield. And that's how I got the second half of the name. Shashka. It's a sword. A type of saber from the Caucasus. Russian dragoons and Cossacks carry them into battle. Now, the Russian Empire had a general by the name of Fyodor Arturovich Keller. His bravery earned him the nickname Russia's Greatest Shashka. Someone must have known about that, because somewhere along the line, Shashka got stuck on the end of Sharashka. The guerrillas were using the name amongst themselves, and by the time I got to hearing about it, the pronunciation had wound up as Shalashashka. So, half gulag, half hero sword. <laughs> it was a perfect fit. But you see how rumors and ideas about people can get out of hand fast. Once you create a character and put it out there in public mind, it warps and twists with every baseless rumor. And before you know it, all people see are phantoms. In my case, it works out just fine. I'm plenty used to working under aliases. <laughs> yeah, you are, buddy. Yeah, you are. That's really interesting. And it's funny, it's like, it was just known as the interrogator, and then we literally have the scene in Metal Gear Solid 1 of uh, Ocelot interrogating Solid <laughs> type deal. Um, and if you resist, Meryl lives. Um, so he's still interrogating, 20 years later. Interesting to see the origin of Shalashashka. Um, which is interesting when he also in Metal Gear Solid 3 refers to himself as he keeps like the SKA at the end when he goes he's a dumpska because he was Adam 
Alright, we got more Salt 2 stuff. I believe the Salt 2 was mentioned quite a bit in, uh, in Peace Walker. Um, so we've got Salt 2. Let's talk about that. So Salt 2 still hasn't gone into effect. That treaty was drawn up to limit not just the size of the US and Soviet Union's nuclear arsenals, but also their delivery systems. The whole deal. That's when we thought all those years of negotiations had paid off. Somebody decides to invade Afghanistan. The time it couldn't have been worse. The president was in the middle of the Salt 2 talks back then. You mean while you were busy trying to stop Peace Walker? I heard. President Ford was meeting with the General Secretary in Vladivostok. In his absence, the political brass in America detected what they didn't realize was false nuclear launch data from Peace Walker. Mm -hmm. And were on the verge of ordering a retaliatory nuclear strike. Coleman's big idea? Humans are incapable of destroying themselves. Turns out he never knew what humans are capable of. <laughs> if that AI, I mean, the boss, hadn't found a way to stop the big data transmission, they probably would have gone ahead with the launch. Deterrence was revealed as the pipe dream it was. All thanks to you. And her. The US-Soviet talks looked set to fall through. What happened in Nicaragua no doubt helped trigger a change of heart. But in the end... The times to find the politics. When you've grabbed their tail, they turn and bite your hand. So I feel that um, what we'll be getting, because I think it's the nature of the game and how it's been constructed, is this looks to be our first open world experience with, with Metal Gear Solid. And in an open world experience, um, the character may or may not have a lot of dialogue in the gameplay elements and I feel that that's what's happening here is uh, we're not going to get much dialogue out of Snake in general gameplay stuff but we'll get it some in, like in bits and pieces in cutscenes but then it seems that there'll be a bulk of it in the briefing tapes which I think is uh, ironic if most of the voice lines we get are going to and like dialogue from Snake will be in briefing files where we can't see his face where apparently the point of going with like Keitha was also to like the motion capture <laughs> so it's like it didn't seem that they capitalized on that but um again early days it's just first impressions and first impressions are very important and I have noted that um he's not talking a lot in person he says like bits here and there but he's talking more in the briefing files. We just have to see um, how that changes, how that continues. Again, um, I'm just going to take a brief mention um, because at this point in time, my first episode has gone live, but the second one hasn't. And I posted a little comment in there just being like, hey guys, let me spitball ideas. Let me theorize. Let me just kind of go crazy and run with this because I'm going to ask questions. So you're actually aware of what I am thinking and how I'm feeling about the game of just like, wow, I'm thinking about this and I wonder what's going to happen. It's not an invitation to tell me. It's not an invitation to say, oh, well, about that. Just wait till this. I don't want to know that. I'm, th I'm spitballing ideas and I'm going to find out what sticks later because we will most certainly find out. Um, I just need patience and I need you to be respectful of making sure I don't like, don't don't give me tips. Don't give me the oh, just wait until this happens and then you'll love this. Um, because I genuinely will. You will know if I love it <laughs> when it happens, when I experience it, when I'm not expecting something. And I feel like we're we've done pretty good. Like the fact that nobody mentioned that David Hayter was not in Metal Gear Solid Five. Um, so I got to react to that genuinely with you guys. The, like, the amount of story that we've taken in, the amount of games that I've played in this series, the amount of hours I've put into this, um, I will say that there hasn't been a lot, if any, spoiler stuff. There's been some, and it's been in past games. We're doing okay at the moment for Metal Gear Solid V. Um, it's mostly been a lot of backseating. Uh, like an incredible amount of backseating, which I am balancing. Um, you know, advice, friendly advice and tips is good to make like a playthrough smoother. Um, straight up backseating is not really the way to go. Um, but I do want to uh, just acknowledge and appreciate the fact that I have not been spoiled left, right, and center. And I think that's a gift because it allows you guys to genuinely um, get that experience of a first time 
um, player of these games and and a, a, a new obsessive fan <laughs> over over this series. Anyway, um, ramble done. Back into more tapes. I first met you 20 years ago now. The place was Selenuyarsk in the Soviet Union. We were enemies. I was with the GRU. You were still fighting for America. 1964. Operation Snake Eater. Its objective? The assassination of the legendary soldier known as the Boss. When you returned home successful, they awarded you the title Big Boss. Your CO, Zero, sought to carry on the boss's will by covertly establishing his own organization. You knew the original members from Operation Snake Eater. From America, there was David O, or as he Ooh. was to you, Major Zero. David O. Donald Anderson, a.k.a. Sigand. Dr. Clark, who went by a paramedic during the operation. And the fourth, you. Wow. From China, there was Eva. And me, Ocelot, from the Soviet Union. Six in total. To us, government notions of friend and foe were meaningless. As were East and West, we joined forces by our will alone. Our objective was to fulfill the boss's dying wish. To make the world one. And to do it, Zero used the philosopher's legacy. The secret war fund you obtained during Operation Snake Eater. This organization would go on to become... Cypher. I, on the other hand, was left with the problem. You only recovered half of the legacy. I'm going to pause there because I want to interject at this because I've remembered um, when I mentioned at the beginning of episode one, I was like, ah, oh, Ocelot wasn't in Portable Ops, he wasn't in Peace Walker sort of deal. He was in Portable Ops right at the end um, because he obtains the second half of the legacy by going to America, which again, that was shown in Portable Ops, which is the non-canon game. So I like that it's being addressed in a briefing file here. I had to locate the other half myself. When I found the funds, I passed them on to Zero, just as you wanted. I still trusted him in those days. We thought what he was doing was the boss's will, until he started that one project. Les enfants terribles, Zero called in. You parted ways, as did Eva, leaving only Anderson and Clark still with him. I maintain limited contact, although truth be told, we were just keeping tabs on one another. The reason was always you. After you returned to the army and created Foxhound, you left America. For a time, even I'd lost track of you. I'd imagine Zero did too. You always were the best when it came to hide and seek. Ah. So Ocelot lost track of the boss uh, as well. That's very interesting. Um, I'm assuming like the tapes like this, because obviously we know this information and the boss knows this information, that I feel like Metal Gear Solid V was a game that was like very approachable to even newcomers of the series. A lot, some people have mentioned in the comments, like, this was my first Metal Gear, this was my second one. Like, a lot of people started with this game, which is insane to me. But at the same time, I can see why, because it was like modern consoles. This looks amazing. Free roaming open world experience. People be like, oh, cool. I'll go, you know, I'll check it out. So there's probably a lot of people that need this in briefing files, you know, um, if they even bothered to listen. But I mean, it's there to give them some recounts. So I feel like maybe that's the purpose of it, where it's a bit like, eh, Ocelot's telling Big Boss stuff he already knows, but I think it's for the benefit of like the player as like a recount of events because there is a lot that goes on in this series so it's it's good that they like recount it in that sort of way but i i do like that it addressed uh ocelot obtaining the second half of the legacy which is from portable ops and i don't know if i've missed it or it was just like maybe it's in like because like i said there's so much to take in that maybe it's something that slipped my mind but i must have forgotten if i've been told already um, that the big boss was aware of um, Leon von Terib's, the project. Um, so that was the reason for the split. They're like, oh, they parted ways after that. So that means he's aware of the project, which is even more interesting um, to me. Because I was kind of under the impression, again, because maybe it slipped my mind, that maybe 
the boss was not aware that he had the little clone children running around, but maybe he does. Maybe he does. Uh, which adds a adds a whole new level um, to this thing for me. Zero created cipher, an information network to tap into every corner of the globe. Woven together, Cypher's arteries make the world just one big organism. And that's not all. It also monitors the thorn in Zero's side. That's you, tracking your coordinates wherever you might go. The further you strayed from your roots, the larger Zero became. It's as if he was trying to close the gap between you. But before long, he disappeared from public life. Only a few people had direct contact with him. For a time, I was one of them. Then a year after you fell into your coma, he slipped out of sight entirely. Since then, nothing. No photos, no recordings, not even a reliable rumor as to his whereabouts. I tried every method I could think of, but Zero was gone. Freed of his control, his creation, his power continued to grow. Cypher is a great beast, and Zero was its spine. But even without him, it's endured, <laughs> evolved. But now its body is rotting, riddled with parasites. Parasites like the ones who attacked you nine years ago in the Caribbean, and then at the hospital. Cypher's Black Ops Unit, XOF. They learned where you were, and came to wipe the slate clean. Interesting. I... Because it, it seems that all that we hear of Zero is that he's just completely gone. And what kind of... Something that does kind of bug me is it's a huge missed opportunity to not have him and that sort of Snake Eater team come back in some capacity it would be so good it would be so good to see like we like that's a whole different angle it's a whole part of this series that we only hear about we don't see like we don't like zero in mgs3 and then we see him again in mgs4 when he's in a wheelchair and big boss wheels him in like doo -doo 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 -doo. all right time to pull the plug on you now zero you idiot um so to not see like a, a middle point there, like if he was in this game, and I hope he is, but I I feel like we're being told, dude's gone, you're not going to see him. I would love to kind of see him at this point. Uh, David O. And then, you know, Donald Anderson. The DARPA chief, who we will then see show up as decoy octopus in our first encounter with him and then his real body i believe is the one that we are in the cell when we get kidnapped uh not kidnapped <laughs> we get captured like the second time uh we never see paramedic again we see paramedic and portable ops and i think you see the other characters from like snake eater as like cameo things that you can find and recruit but paramedic dr clark uh we only hear about we don't see, which is which is a shame. Um, so that is Ocelot's briefing number three. Uh, let's move into Afghanistan today, uh, so we can do the invasion and scorched earth operation. Christmas Eve, 1979, the Soviet Union rolled into Afghanistan. Muslims had revolted against the Soviet-friendly regime established the year before. The DRA forces could no longer contain it themselves, so the Soviets went in to intervene. The Afghan government was powerless and fraught with infighting. They lost the hearts and minds of the people, and that alarmed the Soviet leadership. With the Islamic Revolution happening in Iran, the Soviets felt they had to act fast or risk the spread of Islamic revivalism. A superpower sending a motorized rifle division against men on horseback with antique rifles. Everyone thought it'd be over in an instant, only it wasn't. Some Muslims made their fight a jihad, a holy war, and began a guerrilla campaign on all fronts. A war of attrition. These fighters call themselves Mujahideen. They're being supported by the West through Pakistan. That's why Miller was involved. He was training them near the Zero Line, sponsored by the CIA. 
The war has become a nightmare for the Soviet troops stationed here. They thought they'd be headed home in six months at the most. Then a year passed. Two years. Now here we are four years on with no exit in sight. Afghanistan has become the Soviet Union's Vietnam. The Soviet troops on the ground want to go home, but at least they have homes to go back to. The Afghans have lost theirs. The Soviets destroy the Kishloks, villages, wherever they can. They burn down homes and fields, fill in wells, turn pastures into minefields. It's created a mass of refugees who fled to Pakistan. If the Mujahideen are fish swimming around the villages, the Soviets will go so far as to dry out their ocean. But this has had a big price. There's bitter resentment among the Afghans, and they're taking out their anger on the soldiers on the front lines. Among the Mujahideen are the Pashtun people. They're fiercely devoted to their code of Badal, or revenge. Soviets they've captured have had their hands, feet, and noses cut off before being left to die at the side of the road, just to show their comrades what they're capable of. Friendlies who come across them can do nothing but put them out of their misery. Then they burn down another village in retaliation. And the cycle of vengeance goes on. Damn. Okay. Grim. Wonderful. Okay, we're caught up on the tapes. Um, now he wants us to open our iDroid. Missions. Mission list. Please select a mission. Nice. My job offer is Diamond Dogs has received and made a list of those I want you to consider. Which ones you accept is your call. The objectives of the missions I've added are prisoner rescue, facility sabotage, and high value target elimination. Probably all a walk in the park for you, but they should help you get back on your feet. I put the mission details on a cassette tape. Refer to it if you decide to accept the mission. We'll receive GMP for completing missions, and extracting soldiers and prisoners will boost our ranks. Building up Mother Base is the first step to achieving our goal. If that means wet work, so be it. We're gonna have to get our hands dirty. I hope you're rested up, because we're not stopping. Not until the pain is gone. The future of Diamond Dogs is in your hands. We're counting on you, boss. Wow. So you can go back and replay missions for like stuff where it's like they got bonus objectives. Extract the commander from the Waxind barracks. Complete the mission without being discovered by the skulls. What? How? How? <laughs> Secured the rough diamonds hidden in the Spugme keep. Uh, extracted the transport truck driver. That's awesome. Holy hell, I can see why people say they have hundreds of hours in this game. I'm not going to um, go back on missions and replay the stuff like that to get it, unless maybe it's like worth like getting something that'll help me or doing stuff like that or leveling up. But that is stuff that I think I, I'm gonna do or can do off camera and I can just like play around and experiment with the game because I feel like there's a lot to take in in that regard. Um, so I'll definitely I'll definitely do that myself. Um, but I'll include everything that's that's relevant. It's also nice to see this where it shows you that it'll limit yourself to an area uh, for each mission. I'm assuming these briefing tapes are um, what we've already listened to. Boss, there's something I want to talk about. It concerns the running of Mother Base. Yes. This base belongs to you. Cool. Farming villages in southern Vahan have been subjected to a strategic bombing campaign the past several weeks. The damage is spreading. It's part of the Soviet scorched earth operation aimed at wiping out the guerrillas. The target this time is the commander of a Spetsnaz detachment. He's been key to the operation's success. People say this guy's responsible for annihilating the Mujahideen at Dismasi Laman, the Hamid fighters, overnight. He's a tough, experienced commander. Don't underestimate him. The order from my client in the West is to shoot on sight. They want him out of the picture for good. Sorry, boss. This one's purely business. Wow. Wet work. A hit on a commanding officer of the Soviet military. Nothing personal. We're only doing this because it gets us one step closer to our goal. Ooh, man, I don't like the sound of that. That's like revenge villainous shit, man. Like, we're already watching uh, Naked Snake 
to Big Boss to whatever the fuck he's called now, Punished Venom Snake. Like we've watched this journey of him becoming a villain, and it's heartbreaking to go from that lovable dork in MGS3 to where he is now, to then taking until he meets up with Solid Snake in MGS4 to realize what the fuck he's done, man. That's it's like. What a good arc. And Metal Gear Solid is a series that I honestly would just let go forever. I would just, like, give me way more games. Because there's just so much going on in this series. So much lore. So much everything that I would eat up every single goddamn drop that Kojima would pour into my mouth. Like, if if he was like, alright, cool, we're doing the boss's backstory in World War II. Like, the Cobra unit stuff, which we're going to show you the space mission stuff. It's going to be all of that cool shit. We're going to show you a different perspective on the events where we're going to show you Zero forming Cypher and then, like, the Patriots stuff and blah, blah, blah. Maybe then they could, like, these stories can have different playable characters that can, like, do different things. Like, um, to kind of give us that story, you know, I would love it. Or at least just, just go the anime route. Just give me a Metal Gear Solid anime that has, like, that goes on for longer than One Piece, and I will watch every single episode. I'll be there. Um, I, I am, I'm literally, I'm literally obsessed, and I, it is, it is bittersweet, and it's sad that this is the last mainline Metal Gear Solid, you know? Because I am, I'm in love, and I would easily play Metal Gear Solid 20. Um, you know, easily. Um, we are going to. I'll listen to the briefing tapes before we go into the mission instead of just listening to them all now. Um, so we even can find like blueprints and skills, which is really cool. We need to find an interpreter skill because. Because uh, of the stupid the thing in my head, I can no longer understand people. I think, or just like my brain is damaged, so I've lost the I've affected the language center of my brain. Um, so we're going to literally uh, go on an assassination mission. So that's great. We're going to perform a hit on the Spetsnaz detachment commander. So let's jump into this one. We'll accept this mission. Mission accepted. Two landing zones. Uh, we will just go here. Heading to Afghanistan. Wow! So you just like pick the missions from the chopper and then you fly there, and then this will be like this is like episode. Ooh, this is like episode three. <gasps> Yo, character, buddy, vehicle. Oh, this is fucking cool. Select equipment. Oh my god, man! This. Oh, it's playing Peace Walker music, man. This is literally Peace Walker, but on console, and this is what I wanted when I was playing Peace Walker. Oh my god. Alright, primary weapons. I don't got anything, but that's cool. I just want- we're gonna check out the menus. Uh, support weapons. Magazine, hand grenade. That's it. We're, we're very kind of bare bones at the moment. At least I've got a uh, cardboard box, not a cartoon box. Interscope. Don't know why you just don't call them binoculars. Idroid Fulton device. Um, can also be used on animals. And we have 12 of them. Um, so we don't have unlimited. Uh, for a second there I thought we might have. Um, amazing. Uh, select buddy. Standard tactical loadout for the D horse. Is, is it because it's diamond horse? Because D dogs? And then normal equipment. Wonderful. Select vehicle. You can select a vehicle to spawn with. Select character. Snake. Uniforms. Um, I want the sneaking suit. I, we're gonna have to look into it. Dude, this is like... It remind His uh, outfit, like, totally reminds me of, um... His, he's gone back to, like, Naked Snake aesthetic, you know, when he's got, like, the fatigues on. Instead of wearing the sneaking suit. Head option. Can we wear cool hats? I hope so. Alright. Mission number three. A hero's way. Now, it feels like a lot of these will kind of be our extra ops or side ops. Where it's like these other missions that we do stuff to, you know, get stuff out of the way. So, while we're at the beginning of the playthrough, we're learning the ropes, we're having a good time, we're 
figuring out what the hell is going on. Uh, I will be including the stuff, but then as it goes on, if it gets like missions get repetitive or it's showing stuff where it's just going to be like running around and doing stuff, we'll just cut it down to the essentials. Um, so it's not going to be like literally showing um, everything. Um, just what I feel will be relevant and obviously anything that's story based and uh, cassette tapes and, and all of that, all of that jazz. So let's commence this mission. Uh, oh, you can set the drop time to drop in as soon as possible. Daytime or nighttime. Oh, that's cool. We're dropping in at night, dude. Ah, oh, that's cool. You can choose when to get in. The fact that this game has a day and night cycle is perfect. Because it depends what type of approach you want to take. Um, like, you can be like, oh, drop me in at 6 because I want to take the time to explore the area and pick up stuff and figure stuff out. And then when nighttime hits will take out the commander. As soon as I picked 6 p.m., I was like, oh, actually, maybe we could pick daytime, let the day go while we talk, uh, like, look around. And then when it's nighttime. But this is what we have the phantom uh, cigars for. This is what we got the phantom cigars for. So I think that's, I think that's fine. Starring punished detachment. It's going to do this every time, isn't it? are to take him out. With skills like his, it'd be a shame to waste him. And I'll leave the method up to you. Boss, make your way to Deshago Calais and eliminate the target. Guess starring the Spetsnaz commander. Can we turn that off? Can we turn it off? Oh, we can move from on each side. I love it. Can we have a look in the in the options, right? Um, let me do this because when I when I play the game, when it's in f like, when I turn the game off or turn off the console, it disconnects me from online. So let's 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 put ourselves back online. Um, and then give me my menu back, please. And then we're gonna look in the options. I want to see if we can like turn off the. Imagine if there was an, an an option to turn off the the credits. I think that would be that would be great. Uh, would it be in display settings? Subtitles, score, trial record, marker, enemy presence. See, it's very it's it's quite specific to what it wants to show, but it's not gonna. I don't think so. Ah, game settings. Nope. All right. I'm, I I don't have hope for that. Unfortunately, that's a shame. All right. Eliminate the Spetsnaz commander. Alright. Oh, there's my horse. There's my horse. Whose horse is that? Be careful down there, boss. Give me medicinal plants, baby. We can use compounds from plants to make medicine or poison for use in new weapons and equipment. Take a look at the plants list on your iDroid to see which ones we need. Some weapons and items require certain medicinal plants for development and or use. These plants are registered on your iDroid device and data on them can be viewed by going to the database section of the Motherbase menu. Then go find them if you get the chance. It'll keep the staff happy too. Wow, there's an encyclopedia on animals as well. But it's a question mark. We have to find them? Does that mean we have to fault and recovery them? Or if we just like mark them, they'll pop up? Common Raven? What the hell? There's a goddamn Habitat Unknown. <gasps> Grey Wolf. Death Stalker. Ah, oh, scorpions, right, obviously. Ooh, we need to get ourselves a snake. There is literally a goddamn wild animal encyclopedia. This is incredible. Look at the details of this. Code name. Code name awarded to newly awakened soldiers. Soldiers whose weapon of choice was the chicken hat. Repeatedly completed missions with perfect stealth, no kills. Uh, repeatedly completed missions with stealth. Headshots to achieve great victories. Hold ups to achieve great victories. CQC to achieve great victories. Non lethal weapons to achieve great victories. <laughs> uh, knife. Handgun. Submachine gun. Wow, there's so many. Um, so obviously we can notice that we've got Sniper Wolf, Falcon Raven, 
Pre um, Psycho Mantis, Decoy Octopus. Um, and then obviously we've got our, our good friend um, Spider B and Steel Doberman and Titanium Orca um, and um, Slog Hog and um, uh, Spider B, B, Spider B, yep, B Spider, yep, and then uh, Spider B and B Spider, they go together. Uh, Wolf Man, the, the male version of Sniper Wolf would just be Wolf Man. Um, Sexy Piranha, those are the, the, those, that's the full squad. Alright, so we've got a full on encyclopedia, we got documentation on blueprints, key items, posters, memento photos. There's a lot to take in here, guys. Uh, we can do development oh, while on mission. Ah, we can develop while on mission. Please specify a project. Oh my god, yes. So we need to be like getting our arson gear and finding like diamonds to like. <gasps> yes, yes. Um, yeah, dude. Jumpsuit that the female spy Eva wore during Operation Snake Eater. The chest area can be unzipped for a tactical advantage. Oh, for female staff. I wanted to wear it. I wanted to wear it as Snake. Dude. White sneaking suit that the boss wore during Operation Snake Eater. In addition to the noise dampening soles that eliminate the sound of footsteps, this suit features a high strength aramid weave that offers superb damage resistance. For female staff only. In FOB missions, this uniform prevents your body heat from being detected by NGV-equipped enemies. This is incredible. This is actually going to make me want to play as um, different characters for a change, if we can change their outfits to this shit. We have to experiment with this at some point, um, and like play around with doing other soldiers. That's awesome. Soviet sneaking suit, worn by Naked Snake during Operation Snake Eater. Tuxedo. Uh, standard combat fatigues black ocelot. We're at night time to blend in. Uniform worn by ocelots. Private unit. Um, all weather survival and infiltration suit uh, designed to be heat, water, and shock resistant, maintaining optimum body temperature. Um, we are definitely going to be making. Which one's better? Oh, actually, hold on. This one's a hundred thousand. Why is this one? Ooh, this one has damage resistance. This suit features a high strength armored weave that offers superb damage resistance. So that's these. Um, so this prevents body heat. So does this one. This one's heat, water, and shock resistant. This one doesn't say that. So this has damage resistance. And this has um, resistance to the elements. Fuck it. We get in the snake eater one. Make me the snake eater one. And it develops it right away. You don't have to wait. Oh, that's so good. So you just like cash it in, which means I think, yeah, nah. We'll do it on the next mission. Uh, which means, I don't know if GMP recovers. Like, because in Peace Walker, you had needed to spend your allocation, wait for the developing time, and once it was completed, you got your GMP back. This seems to be like, GMP is a currency, um, and you use it once, and then you need to get more, I think is what the goal is there. I totally want to do that, but that's 300,000, so probably not. Um, C4, smoke grenade, flare grenade, oh my god, there's so much stuff, this is absolutely incredible. Um, so we can filter it by everything... Oh, and then you can also upgrade stuff to, like, grade f 3, but then it's all locked because I need to increase my levels of shit. This is amazing. Oh, look at all of this. Hold on. Specialized infiltration suit. Health recovery speed up. Oh, man, there's a whole bunch of stuff going on in here. Solid Snake! A costume for role-playing a Solid Snake, replete with sneaking suit. You need R&D Team Level 11. 
and it looks all pixelated. I think that's literally like the PS1. Would that be the PS1 costume? Oh my god. Okay, this is this is great. Sorry that I'm just taking my time and being very extensive um, to figure this all out because I just want to make sure that I literally understand uh, what we're being given, what we are being presented with, um, and obviously um, the episodes are longer as a result because I want to get some good gameplay in at the same time. So we've got a shield, goddamn rockets. And they start off at like grade 2 or grade 3 sometimes. I kind of want to... I'm assuming we can just like you make the stuff, but you can also procure this stuff on site. I need this. Golden Crescent. Wow. We need medical team and R&D level 15. That's ages away. So... Let's develop a sniper rifle. Uh, I don't need it though, that's fine. I love that you can like call it in, you can do a supply drop, and you can do a su supply drop like whenever, and it just costs an amount. That's incredible, so you don't need the supply markers anymore. Uh, this costs zero, that's cool. Free gun, I'll take it. Whoa, Tornado 6. Ocelot's revolver of choice. Dude, this is incredible. The amount of weapons in this game is blowing my mind. So this is like... This is like Drebin's shop from MGS4 on steroids. It's crazy. There's so much shit. And then you can load up your resources as well. Fuel resources. View and sell. Okay, so you can sell the stuff as well. So you need things to craft, but you can also sell them for GMP if you want. Okay, I think I have a handle on Mother Base now, so that's cool. You can request the deployment of the buddy. This is just the music. Let me just get rid of the notification so whenever I see that it says new I actually know what it's for um, play briefing tape I think that's the same one that we listened to before that's the target take him out okay uh, so he's just in an open area and he looks like that wonderful a hero's way are we finally ready to start the mission guys I think so um, I appreciate Wormwood, also known as absinthium that's used to make your phantom cigars. Ooh. Time traveling, uh, time traveling medicine. I appreciate that it is still nighttime <laughs> with the amount of time that I spend in the goddamn uh, menus. All right, let's make our way over to the Shago Kalai. It looks like we're just headed straight in. Um, but we've got... Yeah. We don't have a huge area to explore. It's basically just that. So yeah. let's just... Let's get yeah. stuck in. Let's follow the road around... Well, the road, I say. There isn't a road. I wonder if the diamonds shine um, at night still, or whether they only shine during the day with the sunlight on them. Because I'm like, if it's night time and they still shine as they would before, then it would be preferable. I wonder if I'm gonna have to end up doing some, like, GMP grinding to, like, find stuff out. I would really- oh, actually, I see- I see it shining. I would really like to be able to pick this stuff up, uh, while on the horse. Getting off the horse- ah, oh, there was two! Getting off the horse to pick it up. And getting on the horse again is a little bit of a nitpick for me, um, but I think I would love like. You arrived at the objective. Your target should be somewhere in that outpost. Okay. And don't forget, as a specialist recon detail with them, the keep your guard up. Yeah. Those are raw diamonds. Collecting them as assets will raise our GMP. I would love the ability to. Um, 
Oh no, raise the GMP. Okay. Okay. Maybe I'm misunderstanding, we'll see. Boss, intelligence work is all about observation and gathering information. Start by using your binoculars to get a grasp of your surroundings. Do we only have Ocelot and Kodak? A Soviet soldier. A lot of them came from Central Asia before, but lately they've been using more and more Russians. Simple, really. There's less hesitation to pull the trigger if they're not fighting their own race. Morbid cynicism, but it gets results. That's humanity for you. So I wonder if, like, Kaz is more of the tutorial type dude? Uh, who like gives you messages, but then Ocelot seems to be the go-to on the codec, maybe? Or can we have both? There's only one way to find out. Is there a dude over there? Okay. I'm assuming that it might be like Ground Zeroes. That searchlight's manually operated. I like that it will show up on the top right here with Intel Radio when we're highlighting something that can be spoken about. Plenty of grapevines there. They're not bearing fruit, but they'll still provide good cover. Like, that's actually really cool that it does pop up when they will speak. That's communications equipment used by the outpost CP. It must be how they keep in touch with headquarters. If you destroy it, you might be able to cut off the CP from their HQ. That's a shed where they hang their crops to dry. It's a sturdy building. Should be able to take your weight. Wow. I kind of wish... Something that would be cool is if, like, you've checked it out before. That it would be, like, maybe, like, grayed out or something. Or it, like, shows as gold when it's brand new and then grey like this when you've already listened to it. Look at me already suggesting quality of life changes as if it's going to change anything. I just feel like it would be more convenient. That rodent is a gerbil. Where? Don't worry, <laughs> it can't hurt you. Oh, there. I've, I did, I've marked the animal. Um, does that mean we could like tranquilize a fucking gerbil and then Fulton recovery it out of here? Or could I then extract it in the chopper is that for real is that a thing it's a heavy machine gun packs far more power than any rifle you can either use it yourself or destroy it either way best keep in mind some way to deal with it okay dude there's so much that can be spoken about on the intel which is crazy Mortar shells travel in a curved trajectory, meaning they hit from up above you. Like, I can go and check out, like, this fucking whole area for stuff? Like, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get lost. Um, and for educational purposes, especially because this is, like, the first episode. Um, especially because this is the first episode, I want you to see how I learn how to do shit and like learning the game and figuring it out and I think for just so you can actually see what's going on it's, oh, I I literally knocked over a goddamn that's so incredible I love that um, I want you to see what I'm doing it may not be much but we can use them straight away if you bring them back to base 90% chance of being fault and recovered there you go and if I use the... No, I need like... Can we analyze them though? Keep in mind that time doesn't stop while you use the iDroid. You can even move around while using it, but pay attention to your surroundings. Uh, with development... Because I'm wondering if we can do an analyzer to, like with Peace Walker to find out how good things are. Uh, like... Night vision goggles... Stealth camo... Pr 
Prototype stealth camouflage, hell yeah. Pentasmin. Alright, so the in scope, right? Uh, it gets an analyzer function in three levels, and then I can analyze shit. Okay, that's cool. So I can't analyze stuff yet. But I can soon. But yeah, just for your viewing pleasure, so you can actually see what the hell's going on. We'll do the old night vision goggles. Does have a battery though. Intelligence work is all about observation and gathering information. Start by using your binoculars to get a grasp of your surroundings. It does have a battery, and I don't know if that's gonna recharge. Oh, it does recharge. Cool. It goes up. That's great. Okay, I can feel more confident with using it now. I was like, fuck man, if it's gonna run out that quickly, I'm screwed. So we can destroy this. I guess we have to use, we'd have to like use C4 or something and we can disrupt communications. Probably not worth alerting the whole base though, because then that's kind of like counterproductive. At the moment, we are just trying to mark our enemies and get a feel for the location. I can genuinely see how people would just get lost uh, not like lost, but as in like, I'm talking about like, spending hours and hours just playing around with this. Like, this is incredible. From a gameplay perspective, this feels like the perfect Metal Gear experience. Like, every single Metal Gear game should be made with the Fox engine. Especially Metal Gear 1 and 2. Imagine get it, them getting remakes, because it's gonna be... It's gonna be it's gonna be jarring for me to go back and play those finally, uh, and get the full story by going back and playing the first games released, um, and looping the whole story around uh, by going back to those old school titles. Spit it out. Oh, I can't understand them. What we need is an interpreter. The main principle of intelligence work is intel gathering, but that's a problem if you don't speak the enemy's language. We need a staff member with the interpreter skill to do a simultaneous interpretation. Damn. Does that mean I need to have a buddy with me that can interpret? Or if I just obtain the skill? It'd be nice if I could, like, learn it myself. Like, if I could relearn how to do the thing. Doesn't seem like that's... Ooh, doesn't seem like that's going to be the case. Nice. Diamonds are also highlighted in NVG. I'd love to see it. Whoa! And this is like what he was talking about with like the the weather. Sandstorms effectively make you blind and deaf. But that goes for the enemy too. Use the situation to your advantage. This is why you mark enemies. Dude. Uh, can I I need to disable these things that pop up. Like, I know, like, can I disable the tips, please? Dear God. Uh... Why can't I disable tips? Game? No? Really? You can't disable the tip pop-ups on screen. Oh, that's, that's crazy. They give you so many options, but you can't disable it popping up with that gold banner. It's a bit of a distraction. Oh my god, he's right in front of me. F amazing. Alright, now we get to kind of like, just like run around. Marking enemies is such a good thing to do. Oh no, where did the gerbil go? I think he must have died. He's no longer marked. Unless it only marks them within a certain vicinity. During a sandstorm. There's a day and night cycle and dynamic weather, dude. Like this is so this is what um either destroy that or turn it off to shut off all the lights and surveillance cameras in the outpost. But of course the enemy will realize something's up. If you're gonna do it, be quick. And this is what um, they were talking about when you were like, oh, you will have a chance with your Fulton recovery uh, to mess up depending on weather conditions. Uh, 
Oh, yep, there, that works. I used the force there. Good. Big boss has the ability. Oh my god, I love this song. I, I we're not gonna we're not able to talk we're not able to listen to it though because that's hundred percent gonna be copyrighted. I love this song. Oh my god, I'm I really like '80s music. So this game set uh, this game set in the '80s is perfect for me for the for the soundtrack. You just discover your sleepy friend, okay? Oh no, he's coming for me. Just discover. Oh, I should have hidden him in the toilet. You're not going to see your friend? Okay, sure. You will pay the price for your lack of vision. Um, I'm going to chuck you in the toilet. Oh, I could fault in recovery, actually. That's a good idea. Uh, get in. You're in, the, you're in the toilet now. Okay, good stuff. Oh my god, let me get this song. I need it. Ooh, no! Oh, that's the guy, and god damn it, I can't break the window. Oh, we were doing so well. Oh, that hurts. God damn it. Oh! Yep, that's definitely dead. Out of the hot zone by chopper or on land. Don't hang around. Give me the material. Let me get the hell out of here. God damn it. <sighs> How do you know where I am? Oh, you can do like a little leg swipe. Get out of here. Oh no! There's people everywhere! Fuck my life. Holy fuck, how did I even survive? Dude, um, when you're on the ground, you can what? trip them up with the leg. I just needed my health to come back. Alright, I needed to kill him anyway, but I could have stealth killed him. That's a shame we had to go loud that whole time. I got distracted by the music. I really did not expect him to be in the building. Alright. Put some distance between me and the guys. Um, iDroid. Um, missions? Okay. I'm just getting used to a different type of menu to, um, Ground Zeroes. Ah. Pick up. Please select a landing zone. Uh, Support there. Helicopter Roger. Requested. Helicopter expenses cost money to get extracted. Well, I managed to get a music tape and do a bit of exploring there. Fuck. Uh, it's 400 meters away. Let me get on my goddamn horse. What am I doing? Thank you for waiting, horse. You've served me well. The fact that the tranquilizer bullets can't pierce the windows is... Oh. oh! Oh, hide on the horse! Hide on the horse! Oh, God damn it! You had to die unnecessarily because of my mistake. I was like, quick, hide on the horse! <laughs> oh, we just left the mission area. Cool, I didn't even have to get out of the chopper. Arrived at Mother Base. Rough diamonds. Okay. Development project has been added. Okay. Baffle dress. Mission complete. Whew. At least you made it out in one piece. <laughs> Enemy combat alerts minus five thousand. Hits taken eighteen. Um, no kills would be impossible. We were we were close. You can't do perfect stealth unless the target doesn't count because you have to kill him. Um, that is, yeah, that's a shame. That's a shame. That's all right. Um, we, we take it in stride. That was our first like side op, uh, so that that's fine. So that was Hero's Way, and then we, uh, the, yeah, the credits. Woo! <laughs> 
uh, let the let the credits let the credits roll, baby. <laughs> Kojima was really just like, guys, I'm gonna put my name everywhere because of what's gone down. I'm gonna put my name everywhere. <laughs> mm. How you feeling, boss? Mm. Getting used to being in the field again. Having choppers and a horse at your disposal is indispensable for operating in the wilds of Afghanistan. I've gone ahead and arranged for you to be able to develop and customize weaponry for support choppers. And you can also develop new equipment for D-Horse if you like. Use your iDroid to start development as needed. Dude, honestly, D-Horse? All, all I'm hearing is Dick Horse. Like, all I'm gonna read there is Dick Horse. Not Diamond Horse. Not Dog Horse. Dick Horse. Yay. <laughs> Special volunteers. Remember the guys <gasps> brought back from the base <gasps> about nine years ago? Believe it or not, some of them survived that hell we went through. Word reached them that Big Boss is back and they want it in. They're good men. Our brothers in fate. They'll be glad to know you've seen them here. Wow. Dude, you get the volunteers and he's got the diplomat skill. Oh my god, we got Hideo. He's in this game too. He carries on. Hideo's been with us since Peace Walker now. That's, that's I just like, oh, that's fucking incredible. I love that so much. So he's an S rank. So this is why we want to extract people or play Ground Zeroes. Amber Fox. Gold Fox. Wild Harrier. Hungry Crocodile. Grizzly Hedgehog. Something chameleon. Otre. Dizzy centipede fire gibbon. Amazing. Um, I'm pretty sure I extracted like I've replayed Ground Zeroes. I'm pretty sure I extracted Sniper Man and uh, the Eye and the Finger. I don't know if they've sh I don't know if they're included in that. Because I don't recognize them. Or if they were already in. It seems like they would have been in that little inclusion there. Uh, maybe I should try again. Or maybe I need to like connect online or something and see if it syncs up. Oh, what? This IDOPS list is comprised of problems we need you to resolve. Wow. Objectives to be completed and information gained from the soldiers and prisoners you've extracted. These aren't missions per se, but if you can take care of them when you're free, I'd appreciate it. Okay, so the side ops are different. Hold on, missions. Viewing the iDroids help menu. Yep. Ah, uh, so there's a mission list, and we were doing missions, but there is a side ops list. Ah! Extract an interpreter. Russian. Extract the highly skilled soldier, and so we get GMP rewards for each mission. Important side ops. I don't know, man. And. Interpreter seems pretty fucking important to me. Um, and more cassette tapes at Mother Base. Oh man. The Mist Unit. Yes. Oh my god. Yes. Oh, I wish I could play that. That's, that's, yeah, that's not where I'm gonna listen to that later. Oh, I love that song. God damn. Good tune so far. Um, obviously, it's highlighted the importance of the Mist Unit. Cypher's Will. Mother Base Reborn, connection with Seychelles, Whaling Ship, Hawamari, Origins of Diamond. There's so, there's so much. Uh, I'm going to listen to the app Mother Base stuff in a minute, because I want to play, I want to play more. Staff Management. This is so much fun. Um, Hideo is locked. Why is he locked? What does that mean? Uh, Hideo. Is an S rank for Intel, but we don't Select have it yet. Unit. We only have an R and D and support unit. Okay. Um, I guess you can just stay in R and D. Gold Fox. You're a C unit in medical team. Alright. So R and D team can have thirty people, and support unit can have thirty. I think. It, I think. It, yeah. I just think it's auto assigned a bunch of people. 
Awesome. I guess Gold Fox and Amber Fox must be, like, unique, considering they've got the logo on them. So that's cool. Um, so now that we've got... It still says 9. Why did, can we get it to disappear with the notifications? Oh, shit. Get it! Get out of the hydro! The fucking truck's coming. Just stay over there. Alright, now we should be good. Uh, mother base. Development. Okay! Uh, buddy equipment. Please specify a project. Uh, Non-tactical loadout for the D-horse. Perfect for imaginary travels through the Old West. Non-tactical. So, oh, that's so funny. Okay. Battle dress for the D-horse. Reinforced with bulletproof ceramic plates. Damn. Damn. Helicopter. What can we what can we outfit the the helicopter with? Please specify a project. Speaker. Heavy duty outboard loudspeaker. Sound broadcast device developed to raise friendly unit morale as a form of psychological warfare against the enemy. Its effectiveness in actual combat is of yet unclear. Alright. Oh you can fucking goddamn. This is hardcore. Um we got we got GMP. So this is ah oh, this is development requirements met. It would help if I uh, could read. I obviously can't. Okay. In that case, I'm going to develop C4. Um, oh, does that mean if I pick a mission? And I call in the extraction at the end. That will just take. That will take me back to Mother Base to do Mother Base stuff. But if I just do the mission and then leave the area, the mission will end, and then I can just jump in and do more main ops stuff. I think, and side ops. That is wild. Uh, I, I'll just ah look. Development time. Stuff does take time. Interesting. So the stuff that costs zero takes time, I guess, is what I can gather from that. Uh, mission list, side ops list, uh, let's extract an interpreter. So now that opens up the, oh wow, that opens up the whole thing and we can just go anywhere. We can just go anywhere. And there's multiple of, like, these outposts as well. I think there's, like, 25? I think 25 is the highest number. Holy shit. And then, so then if I just pick a main op... Please select a mission. Oh, wow. It'll just highlight the location. And then you get deployed. That's so fucking cool. Oh, man. Is there a... <laughs> is there a fast travel? Um, let me see. So this is where we need to go. Marker play. Marker removed. Oh, I can tell you where you've got stuff before. Gun in place. Okay. Wow, everything that you've marked and found and it's showing as obtained. That is... that's ridiculously cool. Alright, I guess we're gonna just travel this distance now. Um, and extract a Russian interpreter. So, ah, oh, this is what this is. This is the perfect time to do this. Okay, look, we're going to start doing this. Um, we'll go through this while we're on the journey, and this is what this is for. Um, it's a good thing that this we have the option to play this like during gameplay instead of um, the briefing files where you're stuck in the menu because now. When it's like, oh, your objective is a kilometer away, you're like, cool, I'm going to put on my law tapes. Let's play them. What about the unit that attacked us in the mist? You knew something about them. That wasn't my first run-in with them. It happened right before I was captured by the Soviets. We were on the zero line that day. The Afghan side. On our way back from training the Mujahideen at a mountain camp in Kuna province. There's a lot of that work in Afghanistan. Most PFs shy away from it because it draws... Ah! What the fuck? No! For us, 
That was the whole point. The job itself went great. We just had to make it back to a tribal area in Pakistan. But all of a sudden, visibility got real bad. It was no sandstorm. Our point man gave a strange report. He said he could see skulls in the mist. Skulls? The next moment, he went silent. We scrambled into formation, right before his arms and legs came raining down on us. It was always supposed to be a dangerous mission, so I had Diamond Dogs very best with me. We were calling out to each other. But one by one, the voices just went dead. Whatever happened to me, I lost consciousness before I knew it. When I came to, I was in a Soviet camp, tied to an interrogation chair. Could they be some new Spetsnaz unit? No. The ones that interrogated me were just the average rank and file. Whatever group attacked us, the way they moved was just insane. Yeah. And that mist, appearing out of nowhere. The Soviets don't have tech like that. If they did, Ocelot would have heard about it. I doubt the West does either. Otherwise, the folks at Langley would be sleeping a lot easier. Why'd they come after yeah. you? Wish I knew. I'm the only one who survived. Though I don't think they planned it that way. If I was their target, they wouldn't have just handed me over to the 40th Army. Whatever the case, we need to watch our step until we know who they really are. And boss, if you ever do run into them again, don't try to take them on. You just get the hell out of there. I'm going to set it to play one, just in case when we're listening like on the go and I want to discuss afterwards, because I want to discuss that, that it's like, yeah, what the hell is going on with the skulls, you like the mist and like the skulls? That's fucking crazy. Other than I'm literally just like practicing swapping sides, hiding on the horse, and there's a fucking guard post right there. Like, ooh, who's that crazy dude who's just whipping back and forth on the horse? God damn it. All right, Cypher's will. When I first started dealing with Zero, yeah. with Cypher, it was a somewhat parasitic relationship. Though, a mutually beneficial one. Cypher had no army of their own, so they wanted us. They wanted our strength. They approached me as a potential business partner. But they had other motives. Cypher coaxed us into Central America, into that U.S.-Soviet proxy war, to fuel Mother Base's growth. Once we were big enough, oh, they'd force right. us to join Very them. Right. That was the plan. That's why they had Pa still Zeke. Right. And if we refused, she would use Zeke to fire a nuke from Mother Base. Wow. The world would consider us a liability, and countries would unite to destroy us. We stopped the launch. And yet they still took us down. Through that fake inspection, they orchestrated to cover up their sabotage. That power Cypher wanted. We don't have it anymore. So why are they still after you? Is it just the fear of leaving you alive? I don't know. Was Zero really... All I know is the man I knew wouldn't want this. What do you mean? We have to consider that it might not be Zero we're dealing with. We know virtually nothing about Cypher anymore. How big they've gotten, what they want, or even who they really are. We found out there's an English-speaking soldier somewhere in the region. He's a language specialist. His role is to translate information related to the West into Russian. If we can get him to join us, we'll have the upper hand in information warfare. Find this language specialist and extract him. Dude, it's really interesting, these fucking cassette tapes. Especially, like, talking about Cypher. The man I knew wouldn't want this is very, uh, is a very interesting, um, interesting touch as well. And where the hell is Zeke? And where the hell is Huey? Right? Nine years later. What the fuck? That's a, that's a plot thread. Like, what the hell happened there? We were going to reject the inspection. Huey went behind our backs and arranged it. And then was like... It's going to be great. It'll be fine. We, we'll have a plan for it. Like, blah, 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 whatever. Like, went against the boss's back and, like, was, like, reassured him that it would be fine. Look what fucking happened. Uh, Huey is sus as fuck. Suspicious character alert. And he's gone. And there's no mention of Zeke. We're like, oh, you don't have that power anymore. Where is it? Is it still at the bottom of the seafloor? Goddamn doubt it. No way. Um, no way. Uh, we're at the mission objective, uh, so looks like we'll just uh, have to put those cassette tapes on hold. That's the target. Oh, there he is. Yeah. All right, there he fucking is. Gonna get myself an interpreter, baby. All right, let's just uh, sneak up along this ridge here. Just 
just uh, do a bit of this. All right, nice and casual. Three people, we got this. Three people. All right, big boss man, you are bloody as fuck. You need to have a. <gasps> That's why there's a shower at Mother Base. That's why there's a shower icon at Mother Base. We can choose to just stay like this, or we can have a. We can. Ah! We can practice good dental hygiene, as well as physical. Why did I default to dental hygiene? We don't know how good Big Boss's teeth have been cleaned over this past nine years. Maybe that's why. So you can just stay out here, or you can go back to Mother Base and resupply. And just like, or just resupply on the field. Alright, this dude's, this dude's committed to finding me. I'm not here for you, buddy. I'm here for your interpreter, friend. I'll put you to sleep if I have to. Do I have magazines? Yeah, I do. Hey! That's got good distance for the people that it, that get picked up on that. I like that we have unlimited. That's like really nice. You have arrived at your destination. Alright, he's just facing the other way. Let's do it. Yeah. He's an interpreter. Talk. Spit it out. Yes. Speak. Okay. So what we want to do now? Shake you out. Can I fault and recover you? <gasps> Zero percent! Yes! The game finally has logic with the fault and recovery. It makes me so happy that I can't recover him through a roof. Alright, which means I'm gonna have to open this door. Alright. Let's, uh, because I can't throw you out the window. Alright, let's think about this. You're facing that way, you're facing that way. Sure. No! Why isn't it? Why isn't it focusing on him? <gasps> it's because I got a magazine! Fuck! It's because I got a magazine out and I was trying to throw a magazine at him. Oh, that's so funny. I tried going non-lethal. I tried going non-lethal, everybody. Okay. God damn it. <laughs> I was like, why isn't it aiming at him? I literally had the magazine equipped. I could have distracted him with the magazine. These are the things that I'm I'm learning about this system. Right, I'm ready to extract him now. Put him down. 100%. Get out of here. Woo! Bye! <laughs> yeah, dude! Arrived at Mother Base. Nice. Function added. Acquired hey, new skill. The language specialist you extracted has been very cooperative. Says he's always dreamed of living a free life, like folks in the West. What are the odds, huh? I've gone ahead and placed him in the support unit. His job is Russian interpretation. Now you'll know what Soviet soldiers are saying. Oh, uh, yes. Interrogate them. Should give you an edge in the mission. Like... I was like, oh, do we have to have him as a, as a buddy? Because he was saying, like, instain, uh, instant, like, communication. But then, we obviously have a radio, so he would just be listening in on the radio and allows for that sort of, um, translation, which makes so much sense. Dude, this is, this is, uh, this is so much fun. Okay, let's check out the next side up. Extract the highly skilled soldier. Marker placed. Let's get it, baby. Let's get it, baby. Alright, we're three kilometers away. You know what that means? Bump out the Walkman, dude, because we've got some goddamn shit to listen to. Mother Base Reborn. The new Mother Base started out as a test drilling rig operated by a mineral resources supplier, but their project fell through. The Seychelles government was happy to hand the place over to us. Sandstorm. Hmm. 
So with a few dummy construction companies set up as fronts, we started renovating the half-finished rig. From the outside, it looked like the project was back on rails. Cos, you... What? I see what you're doing. Recreating the mother base we had nine years ago. Only this time. That's right. The mother base Cypher thought they destroyed will return from the grave to kill them. We'll prove to the world that we were the victors. And if we lose again? They can't fool us the same way twice. Now our enemies are in plain sight. And when our organization gets too big, we split it across companies. Any company that draws attention gets liquidated, and its capital is back-channeled into a new company. Most PFs are small-time operations anyway. And in this business, the minnows go bankrupt all the time. We've never aroused suspicion. Plus, we have Hewick. Hewick? Human exploitation. How did that not get him? Damn it! <laughs> it's a business specializing in intel gathering. Think of it as a civilian intelligence agency. Cause that's... Remember what they were trying to accomplish at the prison facility in Cuba? That gave me the idea. We dispatch moles into conflict zones around the world, and each sets up an intel network on site. Then they stay in place to give us stable points of contact when other nations intervene in the complex. Hewick's strength is that it has a cutout at Just each level. Then they stay in we dispatch moles that gave me the, the subtitles were being overwritten by the alert dialogue. Idea. Remember what they were trying to accomplish at the prison facility in Cuba? That gave me the idea. We dispatch moles into conflict zones around the world, and each sets up an intel network on site. Then they stay in place to give us stable points of contact when other nations intervene in the complex. Hewick's strength is that it has a cutout at each level. You get your job from one guy, then you hand it off to another. No one has direct access. It's a perfect black box. Hewick members also work their way into the superpowers intelligence agencies to make sure Diamond Dogs gets work. We have those countries by the balls. That's our deterrent when we need it. Wow. Networking. In the intelligence community? Sure. That's how we've grown this far. And when you go out on missions, intel from Hewick will be there to back you up. But despite all that, Cypher has its eyes on us. The only reason I'm not dead is that they needed to know where you were. Figured if you woke up, I'd go straight to you. That's why you made that ruckus at the Zero Line. Yeah, to make their own surveillance work against them. I think it took some of the heat off Cyprus. Cause... Then I just had to wait for you to save me. And I've gotten used to waiting. Cause... That's not all. It was a good chance to scout the market. And with the West wanting the Soviets out of Afghanistan, their agencies are bursting at the seams with funding. Boss, let's start by building up our Afghan presence. Wild. <laughs> Old Snake kept wanting to say there was cars. Cars. I see what you're doing. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting to see, like, he wants to rebuild Mother Base and do the whole thing uh, all over again. Something that I did want to touch on before, um, that I should have touched on immediately, um, it just kind of, a lot was happening. Um, but when, this is why I like to sit down and listen to them in a row, instead of potentially getting distracted. But when um, he was talking about Cypher's will, he was talking about, his relationship with Zero, which was like the phone call at the end of Peace Walker, where I was like, oh crap, like that's, that's way, that is, that is huge. That's huge information. Um, huge information. Um, but then he just kind of just lays it all out on the table here. He's just like, oh yeah, by the way, when I was doing dealings with Cypher because of what was going on, <laughs> this is why that happened. Why put Mother Base in the Seychelles? We're at the center of the world here. We're all the way out in the Indian Ocean. Come on. Lebanon, Sri Lanka, East Timor, and Africa. From here, our reach extends to... Hey, boss. You see many animals in the field. Understand, of course. Truth is, an environmental NGO has asked us to remove wild animals from combat zones. If you have the time, can you extract some back here? There's a reward in it for us. Okay. 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 Alright. Yeah. Let's extract some animals. Because you're interrupting my Walkman session. This is so funny. What the hell? 
<laughs> We're on animal cleanup duty, baby. Anyone want anyone want some animals? Because I'm about to goddamn start a shop. Well, good to know that they will survive the journey back. Oh, that's funny. So there you go. So now if I go into database and we go into encyclopedia, uh, we check the animal that we... It's still a question mark. Interesting. It's still question mark. I was like wondering if it's like, if it would pop up. Maybe we have to wait for it to reach mother base. Or we have to go back to mother base and then it'll show us like an image. Alright, right, now I will go back <laughs> to the cassette tape. Uh, Development complete. Development complete. Latin America isn't as close as I'd like, but we have Amanda and her people. So it's prime real estate for a mercenary. Exactly. Latin America isn't as close as I'd ah. like, but we have Amanda and her people to help in that. Amanda. Day. And besides, the Seychelles government owes us a favor. Owes us? The Seychelles has strong ties to the East, which the West wanted to shake up. It came to a head three years ago in an attempted coup. Ah. It was a force of South African mercenaries with U.S. backing behind the scenes. They were only platoon size. But South Africa is home to some heavy PFs. Too much for the Seychelles to handle. In the end, they accepted help from the Tanzanian army and quelled the coup. We set up the deal and handled on-site tactical instruction. That led to some training work for the Seychelles military. And when we put down a mutiny within their forces, well, we made a lot of people happy. They don't pay us. They just let us have a piece of their offshore territory on the promise we'll come running if something else happens. So we're bodyguards, too. It's a good setup. We can only take Mother Base so far here. We'll have to find somewhere else when this place starts getting big. Aren't you being a little hasty? Nothing hasty about it. You're back with us now. So, Kaz. That's wild. Um... Ooh. He's, he's fucking committed. This man is committed to finding me. Give me a second, sir. Thank you. I don't want to just extract anyone. I want to unlock the analyzer first so I can actually see if they're worth it. But we're going to interrogate these dudes. Now I have the interpreter skill. All right, Let's talk. Speak. The map has been updated. Spit it out. Oh my God! There's a car coming. Ah! Fuck! Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Run it, baby! Yeah! Perfect timing. Oh, they're going to go see the person sleeping on the job. Oh, now they've spotted the guy who was sleeping. Ooh, I wonder if you could shoot the fire extinguisher. Guys, this didn't have to be so difficult. I just wanted to get some information. I don't have the, uh... I don't have the ammo left for this. He's asleep, baby. Alright, now that makes this guy easier. Hey! -ah! <laughs> oh my god, this is so fucking fun, dude. I'm gonna extract the truck drivers. Holy fuck. You're coming with me. 
Holy shit. This is... This is the... I'm so happy. Subject on board. Leave the rest to us. <gasps> you have been so oblivious this whole time. Use the force. Alright, tell me stuff. Useless information. Get choked out. Oh my god. Alright, cool. Um, what were we doing again? <laughs> what were we doing again? <laughs> All right, uh, Mother Base. I like being able to sprinkle in the cassette tapes now. The ship that took us from Cyprus. It used to be a whaler. Yeah, a Japanese vessel. How was the voyage? It was <sighs> stimulating. <laughs> well, she was part of a whaling fleet up until a few years ago. Her displacement isn't anything to write home about, but she can really move. She still had plenty of life left in her, but then the work dried up. Global opposition to whaling has been mounting for years. Is that right? The push to ban it has been gaining traction for a little over a decade. Individual species came under protection as the years went on. And then two years ago, the IWC adopted a moratorium on commercial whaling. Several countries, including Japan, fought it to the bitter end. But eventually, most whaling companies had no choice but to throw in the towel. You ever tried whale snake? Can't say that I have. When I was a kid in Japan, practically everybody ate it. That good, huh? The country was poor in those days, and whale was cheap. International opinions changed since then. In any case, that's why we were able to get a bargain price on the ship. Of course, we did end up spending five times the purchase price in modifications. We had to really work to fit in all the ESM and communications gear while keeping the whaler look intact. Right now, she's going around conducting SIGIN missions. In the future, we plan to use her as a communications relay base between you and Mother Base. And also as a chopper resupply vessel. Uh, SIGIN diamond missions? Docks. The word diamond originally comes from the Greek Adamas. It means indomitable, unyielding. Other words for the stones often mean eternal bond, fortitude, or purity. The same is true of the Star of Bethlehem flowers you laid on the boss's grave. They represent innocence, as well as chastity, yielding to no man while maintaining one's virtue. In other words, staying loyal to something. Wow, okay. That's awesome. Alright, we're all caught up on the tapes. We're all caught up on the tapes. Uh, which is which is really neat information and something that I tried on the way is you can hide because I was like bro if I'm gonna give up my horse I want to know if I can hide problem however is they're still gonna come after us oh my god man come on no yes what that gun will be as loud as any other now no. You have to shoot, be Never careful. mind. Um, I'm not very like, cause I think the the little sh tranquilizer dart um, does drop, like it doesn't shoot entirely straight, which is a shame. All right, commencing side up, baby. I'm glad that we can actually understand what they're saying now. We're extracting a soldier. I can kind of chuck him in this truck. It's great. <laughs> Stop, drop, and roll. All right, we need to get up there because I saw some dudes. Uh, this is no longer silenced because I broke it. This is part of the reason we need to go to goddamn... We'll go back to Mother Base after this, doing the two side ops. Who's up here? There you go. That's the target. Okay. How stealthy can I be about this? Because I need one of you. But you have arrived at your destination. Okay, I think they're just gonna stay there. Spit it out. <gasps> oh, that's fucking fantastic. Oh, that is fucking fantastic. What has 
That is fucking fantastic. I I wanted to test it. That's why I did that. I wanted to be like, if I speak, will they turn around? Talk. And I did that, and they heard it. Because I was like, will the get? Will it just be like a game thing, and it will let me interrogate him? If I knocked him out, it would have been fine. But the fact that when they talk, it alerts them is just such a neat detail. You're now mine. Hell yeah. I think it's time to, uh... Completed. I think it's time to... He's coming to. Roger that. I think it's time to... Take a shower. Please select a landing zone. Pick me up, baby. A support helicopter Roger. requested. That's how we go back to Mother Base, right? We're going, we're going back home. It's time to have a shower and to, you know, relax, resupply uh, after what we've, what we've done. Not before I extract some more animals, though. The same animals as before. If it's not silenced, it terrifies them, which makes sense. Instead of just kind of them just accepting it. Right, let's get in the car. Drive to the extraction zone. This is such a fun experience, though. Like, genuinely. Zero percent chance to fault and recovery. The vehicle. <laughs> but no, just being able to run around and, like, take it all in. And then while you're traveling to a new location, like, popping in the cassette tape and actually listening to the stuff. Like, what that does is that simulates the Peace Walker portable experience of, oh, the, the tapes were designed for you to listen on the go and then it kind of does that in the game now because you can listen to this on the go while you're in the game to different locations they're gonna spot me hello goodbye i'm out of here i'm getting extracted leave me alone all right we're going off road oh we're going for it baby no it was my oh he's coming in to help me for an attack run, isn't he? It's all right. You don't have to. I'm, I'm coming to you. Be quiet. No targets remaining. Yeah, you're good. We'll I'm just gonna drive straight ahead, and hopefully I won't drive into any big rocks. We should be good. We're just driving. We're just driving straight ahead. We're driving blind. Oh, there's a tree. Oh, that's whoop, whoop. Yeah, and then. Whoop. Yes, you can. Oh, no, you can't land because of the weather. Alright, uh, well, I guess I'll just chill out. I'll pick some flowers while you uh, land. I'm just caught in the middle of the sandstorm. Da -da 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 -da. Da -da 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 and then I get copyright striked for that. How about it? How about it? I go to all this effort to hide music and then my own voice will be the reason. Pequod, why don't you just like fuck around and land in the sandstorm? Alright, there it is. <laughs> it's ending. I actually love the dynamic weather though, it's cool. Not when I'm getting picked up, though. <laughs> it's like, we'll just wait. Alright, back to Mother Base. Take me home, baby. Take me home. Take me home. What a rush. So we did a main mission, two side missions took in all the briefing files, absorbed all of the information possible for, um, for what's going on currently on those tapes. Extraction arrived at Mother Base. There we go. Give me the report. Grizzly Vulture. Troublemaker. Harassment. French. Just, just one new, one new volunteer. 
I wonder if they it'll have outer ops like Peace Walker did when you can send your people on missions that Snake doesn't go on. That'd be cool. Side ops list updated. By connecting your iDroid to the onboard computer, you turn the chopper into your own aerial command center, or ACC. Some elements of staff assignment and R&D of weapons and items can only be performed from there. Yeah. As long as you need to consider all your options. So there's more stuff that you can do here, which makes sense. Wonderful, good to know. Okay, so whip out the old iDroid. Daily bonus received. MB coins. Okay. Uh, rewards. We get rewards. Daily bonus. So this is for being connected online, I guess. Good to know. Um, and then we unlocked... So you secure blueprints in side ops as well. Um, Please select a mission. Certain things can only be done from certain points, which makes sense. Um, can we just go to Mother Base and have a shower? Return to Mother Please Base. Please select a landing zone. Yes. To Mother Base. Take me home, baby. We want to have a shower, and that's how we're gonna. That's how we're gonna close out the episode by having a shower, washing away the faces of the men that we killed unnecessarily because, like I said, we tried to do it peacefully and I got caught many times. <laughs> I think I did a decent job stealthing through certain areas and then the other time was just me just like making those rookie mistakes of just like, oh, of course you're gonna see me if that happens and not taking full advantage of reflex mode sometimes. And I'm like, ah, environmental obstruction. And we get to watch the approach, except this time, Mother Base is not on fire and not getting blown up by, uh, by C4. Drop me in, baby. Is Ocelot just chilling here? No? Just my boys ready to salute me. Hello, team. Oh, this is actually so cool. Alright, where's my shower? Um. Oh, it's this. Temporary shower unit. Clean me off. There we go. <laughs> Look, I'm fresh! And dripping with water. I'll do whatever you ask. Oh my god! The fact that you actually... The fact that they are fully rendered and actually available and walking around. That's so fucking cool. That's so fucking cool. This has been an amazing third episode, guys. Really getting into the... Really getting into the gameplay stuff and figuring out what's going on. And I'm, I'm absolutely in love with uh, the gameplay. And there's been a healthy dose of story and briefing for the cassette tapes at the same time to really get information while sandbox adventuring, you know. And uh, I will close out that episode here. So guys, thank you so much for watching uh, the third episode of The Phantom Pain. And I will see you next time.